everyone welcome to the stage 15 tour de france betting preview for good for the game.co.za well what a stage we had yesterday again i've got to say that it was one of those stages i called perfectly and fortunately after all was said and done i ended up showing a small profit but i feel like i should have got more uh, perfectly is actually the wrong word i did suggest it would be a small bunch sprint to end but in actual fact we had a, a solo winner go away uh, right near the end of the stage he took advantage of things absolutely brilliantly and let's just have a look at the classification soren krach anderson uh, oh, it was a fascinating finish but let's go back first to the beginning of the stage where as i predicted on that climb just before the sprint boris started putting the pressure down to try and distance bennett it didn't work totally because although uh, Sagan uh, managed to get away, Bennett uh, sort of hung in there to get some points, but it did start putting Bennett under big pressure. And then we saw Bora ramp it up on the long uh, climb, which we totally expected them to do. And Bennett hung on gamely, eventually though, cresting the climb uh, around about, I think, 45 seconds or a minute, a minute behind, somewhere around there. And that was just too much for his team to bridge. And they eventually gave up, gave up and he looked a very beaten man, I must say, when they, when they decided to eventually sit up so Bora got the job done. They managed to drop Bennett. And of course, that set up a frantic stage because everyone else was just hanging on to the Bora train. And what a stage we had. We had a, a pretty smallish group coming through the end there. It looked like it was going to be a bunch sprint. But of course, attacks were going off on those final short cat four climbs. Uh, you know, everybody had a go. Thomas de Ghent had a go. And uh, Sunweb, once again, they were able to sit in the wings and just play their cards towards the end. And it certainly looked as though they were potentially setting up for Mark Hershey again. And in fact, I think it was Hershey's move that won it for, for Anderson because what happened is Hershey attacked and uh, no one responded initially. And Peter Sagan, his team had obviously set this whole thing up for him to win the stage and get massive points off Bennett and, and get back into the green jersey race. Sagan realized someone had to mark Hershey. Now he's been criticized for the move, but I think he did absolutely the right thing in chasing Hershey down. I think if he hadn't, Hershey wins the stage, no doubt about it. The problem for Peter Sagan is he'd already used his team up and by the time he caught Hershey, there was that moment of hesitation. And at that moment, Anderson went. And I, you could actually see Sagan look at everyone and go, like, guys, I'm not going to chase this one down as well. Who's going to step forward? Nobody stepped forward soon enough to do it. And before you knew it, Anderson was gone. Luca Mezgek, who won a match bet for us yesterday, uh, we had him over Jasper Staven. Well, he won the sprint. Uh, you know, Sagan, uh, understandably, he came fourth, which was a disappointment to him. But uh, uh, Mezdek actually show, showed himself to be the strongest. And to me, he was almost the big loser on the day because he had teammates in the group and uh, they were relying on other teams to chase down. And, and by the time Mitchelton Scott started doing some work, it was absolutely too late. But a good sprint and, and one for the notebook. Uh, very, uh, you know, he, he was pretty quick there towards the end. Uh, Consoni, I believe it was his birthday. That was certainly well done. Uh, Peter Sagan, yeah. I mean, uh, in the end, the day was a bit of a disappointment. As you'll see, not the big change to the green jersey betting that looked to be on the cards at one stage, had Sagan won the stage and taken big points. And then there was a sort of uh, a decent day for Trentin. He just he just lacks the speed, uh, but he has moved himself into a decent green jersey position. All in all, though, it was an excellent stage yesterday. Really enjoyable to watch. There must be some tired legs in the peloton. Sets up very nicely for today. Let's just have a look. Uh, outright standings, very little change. Uh, Primoz, Primoz Rodzlik, um, he is, sorry, I'm just having trouble with the old mouse here. Primoz Rodzik, uh, he still leads uh, Podjokar there by 44 seconds. And uh, only two summit finishes, one of which is today, left in the tour. We won't spend too much time on that because there was no change. The green jersey, we've got Bennett still well clear of Peter Sagan. I think the worry for Bennett, quite frankly, is whether he makes it through to Paris because ooh, he is struggling. And uh, yeah, I wonder if at some point Bora aren't actually going to also put the hammer down on the stage. You bear in mind they've got a team of climbers and try and actually get him eliminated from the race. The only thing is there's a lot of other sprinters who would be eliminated probably before him unless he really does have bad legs. Uh, the mountain jersey, it pays to get into the jersey early in the tour. Kostnerbroy, he's still leading it, but he's got absolutely no chance, and I, I think he loses it today for, for sure. Uh, Mark Hershey there looking a good prospect. He's around eight, nine. No, no, he can't be that high. We'll have a look at the mountains betting now. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 today's a day for the king of the mountains. I suggest having a look at the betting see if you can find something there i'm uh, battling a little bit at this stage here is the stage for today what an absolute brute of the stage now we've got a very interesting stage in that the first 98 kilometers are predominantly flat we've got an intermediate sprint coming here and let me just get the mouse to this side of the, those monitors i can take the good for the game uh, logo down there we've got this a uh, straight uh, start of 58 kilometer sprint so let's focus on the sprint first and foremost 
um, you know, if a break goes, which is probably likely, um, I think we might see the likes of Sagan and Bennett in the break to actually fight out the sprint. Alternatively, is there an opportunity here for Quick Step to actually control the stage up until this point as well and see if Bennett can get more points over Sagan? Or do they take the view that, listen, we're far enough ahead at this stage, we're just going to ride the green jersey defensively? In any event, we're going to get a frantic start because there's going to be a lot of climbers looking to get into the break. They're going to be uh, hopefully having a few teammates in there with them. Aside from that, we've got the GC guys, um, Ineos, uh, Astana, even maybe Yamba themselves are going to be looking to put riders into this break as well because you want riders potentially with you on this final climb, which we will get to now. But let's have a look. So, so the, uh, you know, I've looked at the stage. I, honestly, <laughs> I've been pondering the stage all night. I don't know exactly how it's going to go. One thing for sure, I think we are going to be in for a frantic start. And then uh, after 98.5 kilometers, we hit this Cat 1 climb, 11.1 kilometers at 8%. That's an absolute beast. Then descent, no valley. You go straight into another very steep climb, 6.9 kilometers at 8.9. Now, um, the breakaway will probably lead over this, these climbs, and then we come to the final 17.4 kilometers at 7.1, the Grand Colombia. It's going to be a, it's an absolute beast of a climb, and, and it's, it's really, really long. And it, it, we'll have to see. I think a breakaway would need probably five to six minutes at the bottom of this if it was going to hang on, and I'm even talking about a fairly a stronger climber. So it's going to be very interesting to see what, what happens. But, you know, for me, it's all going to revolve around the GC guys. Who's going to take control? Are the GC guys going to rather employ the tactics of getting men in the break? But who's going to take it? Who's going to make a move on this uh, Cat One climb? Perhaps nobody. But if, if, for example, someone shows weakness, there could be some real action on here. And uh, who's going to have the domestiques with them? Obviously, you'd expect Rodrik to still have a few here on the Grand Colombia. I would imagine, from a Yambo Visma point of view, they'll ride the stage fairly conservatively until they get to the climbs. And uh, certainly at the bottom of the Grand Colombia, they're going to start ramping up the pace and start shedding guys left, right, and center. It really is a cracking stage. Sherbert, I'm, I'm battling to make a prediction on it. I'm just hoping for plenty of action. Let's have a look at some of the betting then. This is just quickly the outright betting at World Sports Betting. 9 to 20, uh, Roger Podjokar, 9 to 2. Let's uh, have a look at the green jersey points classification betting. We've got 6 to 10, Bennett, still firm favorite. Sagan, 14 to 10. Mm, yeah, interesting. I just don't know if Sagan's got enough opportunities left to take points on Bennett. Yesterday, he really needed to win that stage to get right back into the jersey race. The thing is, though, Bennett could well be absolutely broken by this point. He is looking like he's really struggling on the climbs. Um, going on uh, to the stage betting, and uh, yeah, time to nail, nail up some bets here. In fact, I'm just going to go on to... World Sports Betting, you have 5-2 to two Primoz Rodrik. So they are suggesting that this stage will be fought out by uh, the grand, uh, uh, the general classification contenders. And I tend to agree, yes, a breakaway can go away. We may even get the break going very late. We may even get the decisive break going on, on this first climb. And there's a, certainly plenty of guys with good legs, the likes of Hershey and that, who I expect to be in the break. Um, but at the end of the day, I think this long climb is going to be raced uh, hard by the, by the contenders. And I don't think the break is going to last. I do think we're going to have a GC winner. And I certainly wouldn't talk you out of backing Primo's Roger, especially at WSB. You've got the money back for second place promo. And uh, if all goes according to plan, if Roger has the legs that he's shown so far, he should win this stage. Uh, the man who could potentially match him there, as the betting suggests, is Podica at 9-2. to two. I'm tempted to have a bet on him. I've obviously got my long-term interest that he, that he wins. But, yeah, I don't – I'm not going to um, – I'm not going to have a go. I'm going to have at this point a, a go and look somewhat a little bit further down the betting boards. Martinez would obviously have to win this from a break. Egan Bernal, well, he hasn't shown anything so far to suggest he can win. Well, how will Ineos ride the stage today? Will they put men in the break? Will they try and take control from the top of the first climb? They simply have to. The, the problem that all of the teams face is to try and weaken the Yamo Visma team, to try and isolate Roglic. But it's so difficult because they've got such a strong teammates. Um, Mark Hershey, yeah, I mean, I could great chance of winning this stage. You know, he's going to get into the break. I think he'll take mountain points. I expect him to be in the break. Let's put it that way. But fourteen to one, oh, geez, I don't know. With that on that final climb, you think about how much time he lost on that climb the other day, around about three minutes, and it was a much shorter uh, climb. Admittedly, some very steep sections, but I'm not sure if I can I can be taking that price. Um, Lopez, I do fancy he, uh, him to have a good ride today, and you'll see he's in my staking plan. A lander 20 to 1 and then you really got a mixture of breakaway riders and uh, contenders 
that's uh, yeah, that, that that that's it as far as the uh, the preview goes. Let's just have a final look at that um, at that stage fifteen profile. I want to put that up there. What an absolute beast of a stage this is going to be. Well, I have to nail up some bets, so let's uh, go and do that now. Just a reminder: if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, go down and hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing a show. Or, or, or certainly asking Henrik Lemmer to do a show with me tomorrow sometime where we have a look at the final week and make our predictions. We'll also have a look at jerseys like the King of the Mountains, and I'm sure that betting is going to be absolutely shaken up after today. I actually didn't look at the King of the Mountains betting, so let's just quickly go to World Sports Betting. I'll just want to pull up the King of the Mountains. Here we got 6-1, to one, Rajlech, Roland, Martinez, Hershey. Interesting, they're betting all four of them 6-1. to one. Podjaka, 11-1. to one. I mean, there's big climbs, I think. 40 points on that. Uh, whoever wins this climb will automatically go ahead of Kostnerfroy today on that final climb, unless Kostnerfroy picks up some points. I mean, you can see how big that is. If Podge can win today 11 to 1, that will start looking like a massive price. But I just don't know. I have, I'll post anything in the Good for the Game forum today that I do decide to do on that if I've got time because I am planning to go out for a bit of a cycle myself. Right, uh, this is this is getting to be a lengthy preview. <laughs> a lengthy preview this week, this one. So let's get into the bets. And my first bet of the day is going to be half a unit on Lopez at 20 to 1. Lopez likes long climbs. He's also explosive. He can attack on the climbs. And he's far enough back that if he does attack near the end, if the GC guys are together, he might be given just a little bit of leeway to, to go on and potentially win the stage, particularly if someone like Roderick is not on his best of days. And I'm also going one unit then for, on him for a top three at 9 to 2. Uh, interesting to note that Sunbet have got the better top three price of 9 to 2. And WSB have got uh, the, the better win price. I think Sunbet 18 to 1, and they are 20 to 1. Then I've got a couple of interesting little match play bets. And here I go in one unit, Sepkus over Dumoulin at 22 to 10 at WSB. Now, it's interesting because Dumoulin, in theory, is the number one domestique now for Roderick. But I've just got a feeling that um, they might use Dumoulin a little bit earlier on the Grand Columbia. And that we may have a situation where Kuss is the last man standing. Kuss is the last man standing with Roderick, and I think 22 to 10 there is a cracking price, and this is something about Sepkus' form that I'm not aware of, I think this is a, I think this is decent, because Dumoulin hasn't looked particularly good, and it may well be that he steps forward and does his turn a little bit earlier, and then another match bet, I like this one, Lopez over Bernal at 13 to 10, obviously there's a chance that Bernal could, could really find his legs, but if you think about it, Lopez did finish ahead of him in the last time they raced, and if Bernal is struggling, well, I think there's every chance he loses ground today. So I do like that one. That's Lopez over Bernal, 13 to 10 at a Sun Bet. Right, guys, that's the end of the stage 15. A preview tomorrow is a rest. I will be uh, catching up, hopefully, with Akruot Lemon. Uh, is his handle on Twitter to talk about that. And, of course, we'll be back on Tuesday morning with a stage 16 preview. Let's hope for plenty of drama today. Uh, I must admit, I'm hoping for Roderick to sign a bit of, to show signs of a bit of weakness, although I wouldn't discourage you from backing him for the stage. Let's see how it goes. But I would just love this to be set up for a brilliant final week of the Tour de France. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you uh, Monday and Tuesday for the week three preview as well as the stage 16 preview.